One of the projects I wanna work on is batteries. So I've only been using two batteries. Um, I plan on keeping in that way, but it's set up for four because that's what they used to do. So one, two, three, four, but I'm only running two. So you can see I got all sorts of loose, you know, uh, loose end connectors that aren't connected to anything. This guy right here, this guy right here. There's another one back there um, that are joined. So I wanna clean all this up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one battery here, one battery here, so that this one will be set back and then I'll have space up front here. Um, I'm gonna do a battery kill switch so that I can manually um, slow power from, you know, uh, kill power to the rest of the truck from here. Um, and that's gonna be everything except the starter. So the starter I'm gonna keep hard lined in um, even even with the kill switch. So um, that's the gist of it though. It's gonna take quite a bit. So I got a lot of wiring. Um, oh, uh, you know, the, the two knot gauge, just like this stuff, but new. Um, and it's all the black stuff, but I got red shrink tie, or red, red shrink wrap rather. So I'll red shrink wrap the, the hots and I'll black shrink wrap the grounds or the commons. Um, and just get this cleaned up because unfortunately there's just a lot of loose loose ends loose connections and I have a kind of a suspicion that there might be a issue there also going to add a ground from the batteries to the frame back here I'll do it behind the air dryer so this bracket isn't doing anything anyway so I'm going to pull this bracket off and then um, ground it to the frame here it'll probably take a little bit of grinding just to get to the metal um, but that'll be what I'll do on that one right there. And I'll just loop it out and tie it in there. So that will get a nice common tie in there. Uh, ground, rather. Um, that should be the gist of it. Uh, I have to redo the starter. The second starter died as well. Um, after only two or three starts, I think. And that's, that's kind of why I think, even though my batteries are new and are showing good voltage... Um, I have a sneaking suspicion there's a power issue somewhere that's allowing the starter to die. And uh, I want to try to fix that. Um, oh, and one quick thing I got a button up here is just shrink wrap. Uh, that right there on the air dryer. So I'll probably shorten these lines so that there's not so much loose line coming in, you know, because I got all I got this guy right here too. And this guy's leaking on me but I didn't use DOT fittings because the tube shop didn't have DOT fittings. So I'll probably just get new fittings for that that are DOT approved and they'll be less likely to leak anyway. But there's a big leak coming out of both of these guys right here. Probably because I didn't do it right the first time. Not shocking there. So, all right. All right, so I got a battery kill switch now and I'm setting this up for two batteries. Basically, I'm gonna have my battery kill switch right here, which ironically this little what used to hold the batteries in place this little corner post makes a, a real good fit for the for the battery base here for the kill switch um i'm gonna run the starter right to the starter so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna put the i'm not gonna put the starter in the direction of the kill switch the kill switch is only gonna go to the polarity box um, for the 24 volt and 12 volt loads that go to the polarity box first. So that is the plan. Here is kind of the loose layout. I've got everything popped open so that you can get to the polarity box. That's kind of an adventure. You got to pull the tire down and pop open the, uh, the air, the air feed to the motor. Not a big project, but, uh, you know, got to move a couple things around to make it work. So, but I'm running new lines in the process. So some of these lines are in pretty rough shape. Some of them, you know, they're double fitted because it was for the four battery arrangement and it's had tape thrown over it and everything else. So um, it was one of my theories about what was going wrong with the starter was that maybe there was a short somewhere or we were having some sort of problem. Doesn't turn out to be the case. Turned out to be water getting into the starter. Um, basically what happens is the water sheds off the back of the cab down here kind of ends up in and around in this area and into the bell housing right here and then there was a fording plug underneath which is maybe two seconds here 
which is this guy right here. See if we can see it. Yep, that guy right there. So there's, oop, there. Hold on, let me point to it. So, plug goes in there. Oop, hold on. Okay, that's better. So, that's where the plug was, holding water, and that's where the plug sits when you're not using it. It's got a little boss that you can thread it into. So if you're fording, you put the plug in. If you're not fording, you take the plug out and you put it right there so you don't lose it. Anyway. <clears throat> Pretty sky out tonight. But anyway, that aside, we are on our way. All right, so here's the polarity box that I am kind of working on. Oh, a little corroded here, but everything everything tested fine. But uh, anyway, so I've got my new 24 volt that's going to go to the battery disconnect. And next, I'll take care of the 12 volt down here. Put a new one, new line down. That's the one that was in really rough shape. Bear with me here. This is that 12 volt line right here. That's the one that's got all sorts of connections and the connections are starting to fray. Like right in here, all this is coming apart. So any water gets in there, it can start to, it can start to corrode, doesn't mean that it will. I think those are all stainless, so they probably don't corrode um, much if at all, but these are all gonna be properly capped and lined up. So I've got the one fed in here. This is where the disconnect's gonna go, like you saw earlier. So I'm gonna run my next one that's gonna go right there and I'll kind of follow the same path. And then I will work on, I made one here, but I think it's too short. So I might have to remake that one a little bit longer. And then that leaves 12 volt, 24 volt live rather. And then 12 volt, yeah, 12 volt live will come there and loop down here. And then that way, yeah, I can just pop the button, turn the batteries off. And then I am gonna run a fresh ground cable to that bolt right there. And I'm actually gonna take this bracket off because it's really not doing anything. There's a bracket down here that's holding that whole thing up. So this isn't doing anything. I'll just take that off and then that way I'll grind it down and put my new ground there. Okay, I'm running out of light so you may not be able to see everything very well, but 24 volt side hot so i got 24 going to the starter and then 24 loops around here 24 hot here 24 hot to the polarity box 12 right there 12 down in the back 12 to the polarity box then we've got our common running up to the polarity box and we've got our ground which i haven't grounded yet but i hooked it up to the battery that is going to ground right behind the air dryer. I just haven't done that yet. It doesn't need to be done in order for it to run, but I want to do that as an upgrade so that the batteries have a ground closer than, um, cause there's one, but it's up at the starter, which is up here. And there's another one on the other side, on the other frame rail with the alternator. There's not a very good ground on the polarity box, um, or next to the polarity box rather. It's not on the polarity box, but um, this will just help ground the batteries a bit better. So that will be a little, uh, little upgrade. I got rid of the NATO port. It's just not something I ever see myself needing personally. Um, but you know, I may regret that later, but nonetheless, I mean, it's there if I, if I ever want to put it back. Um, but I pulled it. So that's about it. Okay, so you're gonna have to bear with me a little bit because I don't know all the proper terms necessarily. Like, I don't know if this is actually called the common rail or not. Um, but basically what you have is you, if you lift up the spare tire and go into the air box, there's a polarity box. And then I think what would be called a common rail, but you got the polarity box to the right and actually the common rail is a little bit down to the left of it if you're looking at it physically behind the, behind the air box. But for the purposes of drawing this out without making a huge spaghetti diagram, I did my best to um, do this here. So, um, tw this is your 24 volt live terminal. So 24 volt to starter positive terminal, 
Then you got the positive running to your 24 volt breaker. Um, this is my battery disconnect here. 24 volt to your 24 volt battery terminal in your polarity box. Then you've got the 12 volt coming down from the polarity box to your 12 volt on the breaker side and to the 12 volt, which is your second positive here. Then you've got your positive negative here. That's what makes the 12 volts. Then you've got your negative here and that runs up to that, what I'm calling the common rail. Again, I'm not positive if that's what it's called, um, but that's, that's what you're connecting to. And that's the top terminal on that. There's two terminals on that. There's a top and a bottom. That one connects to the top. Then off the bottom, that's what connects to your starter um, on the lower on the lower side. You've got your positive, and I'm calling it negative, but um, your your lower your back peg on your starter. So you've got your top peg that's on the solenoid side. Then you've got your bottom peg that's on the main body, sticking out the back of the main body. So that's the diagram there. If you have any questions, let me know. and she lives again. Except I got this silly spare tire stuck halfway up that won't move. I gotta work on that today. But everything's running. Pretty happy. So that's all set. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna look for some covers. Put these guys up. Just to protect them, you know, not that they get a funny UV or anything, but just something to make it look a little tighter, a little nicer. Disconnect this guy. He's running.